Welcome to the Totally Awesome Outdoor Show. Now, you'll probably gather by my current attire, I wonder why I'm wearing this clothing inside my garage. That's because in Britain we have something called the British winter. It's wonderful. No, it's not four feet of snow and ice. It's just horrible, miserable, cold, wet, windy weather. And it stops me going fishing and it drives me in here, forces me to work for my son on the outdoor show doing the DIY section. Now then, a few years back, we put up a film on, well, what a monster hitter. It's turned into several hundred thousand views. You can see it up here. It's called How to Make Picket Fence Out of Pallet Wood. For free! Yes, I love things for free, don't you? Well, anyway, a lot of people contact us and say, but we've got a gap in our picket fence and we want to walk down a pathway. Can you show us how to make a picket fence? Well, that's pretty easy, but let me show you how to do it. I've got some nice thick edge pallet wood. Now, pallet wood comes in different grades, obviously different countries. Check out your own country. I can't give you thick pallet wood. I happen to have some thick pallet wood. So I'm gonna want two supports either side. That's what I'm gonna be using there. Quite thick, probably, if, well, I don't know, a quarter inch thick than most pallets. So it's really, oh, hurt my ears. Nice, strong pallet board. Ideal for a fence. That's the two side panels. Then all you're gonna do is make a, a square frame across the top here, just roughly like this. You're gonna fix it at the top, fix it at the bottom, ensure it's square, and then you're gonna fill that out with slats on the preset distance. Now I'm gonna guess and say, you have, what, the average footpath, would it be 30 inches or would it be three feet? 30 inches is there. I tell me that's perfectly wide enough. Yeah, you might be able to make, you can make it for whatever you want. Look, I'm gonna call it, I think three feet. I think I might be able to do a three foot, which is quite a big one. No, in fact, you know what, I think that's too big. I think 30 inches. When I look at my door there, I know a lot of doorways on average are about 30 inches, certainly in the UK. So let's go on the door width. I'm making the overall outside 30 inches. I'm gonna start with these two outside edges and the two crossbars at the top, and I'm going to put a little dab of glue, and I'm going to screw them. What else? No, I see no point in making fancy joints on them. It is a garden picket fence, dead easy to make, and all I do, after I've made the frame like that, and I've filled it out with pallets, I'm going to put a Z bar, I call it a Z bar, to make a Z shape, which really boosts the support. Let's get cracking anyway, and see if we can get this screw together. All right, first thing I'm going to do is, on my workbench, I'm going to square off the end here, with a set square and run it off with a jigsaw just so I've got a straight edge to start with. Turn that around, I'm going to measure off my 30 inches and I'm going to use the second one after I've cut this as a sort of measuring so I don't have to measure 30 inches twice this end off and that gives me my outside measurements this one is so easy to make I should be doing it for a living now I'm going to be using this one to lay over the top of the other one so that if you are making let's say a load of fence panels just be aware that although you put your hand on here to level it up, you're going to have to here keep measuring. Cut that one, okay? So imagine that's off. This is the bit you keep in, you cut that off. Then you do the same again, the same again, the same again, the same again. Well, just be aware that every time you're getting this end here, the edge lined up straight, that you've got to allow for the thickness of the pencil because each piece is a thickness. It might only be one millimeter, but after you're doing about 15 of those, you're gonna be up here. So do allow for that. And if anything, just get, get them both edges at the back here, they are dead level. And then just tease it back a millimeter to allow for the thickness of the pencil for marking it again. That way, you know all your lengths should be the same. Of course, the proper way to do it is to measure like this. And as you can see, I'm bang on there, 30 inches. Zip this one off, and we can put the actual main square frame together. Now 
The other thing you should take into consideration is the height. How high do you want your picket fence? I'm going to go to there. It tells me roughly waist height. Three feet. Nice easy one. Make it as high as you want. You can make it up here if you want, but you're governed by the size of the pallets. So I'm going to go for three feet high. Now, if you imagine this by two uprights, normally, ordinarily, with uh, piggy fences, they generally have a point, don't they? They have the tops angled off. You can also do it round, and of course it depends whether you want the gate to stand out as a feature. In other words, you have the picket fence with a, a point to them and the gate is rounded, or you want to cut all your picket fence rounded and match it with this. I'm going to do these as a rounded top, because this face is just squared like that. It's pretty boring, isn't it? So I look around on my vast shelf of rubbish and find something that is about the same diameter across. The grease tin is a little bit short. The extra heavy duty grease tin used for my fishing boat looks pretty well bang on. So I'm going to use that and mark up a little round bit there. In fact, I might even be able to get a bit closer with some of these. I mean, it's just a question of going along and finding something that really catches your eye and gives you that round edge. I turn this upside down, the grease falls out. Turn it up the right way. Just come, when you do cut this, about a millimetre or two in from the top. So I'm just going to mark this one. Use one of those nice carpentry pencils and you can see what you're cutting with the jigsaw. And then you can do the same with the actual panels of picket fence. So if you do this now, when you put it together, I find it's easy to do them individually. Just come back about a millimetre or, or so from the top. Almost again, it's the thickness of the pencil. So the pencil goes right around the edge of the wood. It doesn't actually run off and slip off. That's difficult to trim off. You want a nice, smooth cut when you do the jigsaw. I'm going to clamp that one up. Just hold it in the workbench, nice and firm. And then using all your health and safety staff, your ear defenders, your dust masks, your glasses, your goggles, clean underpants, whatever else you've got to put on. Use all the health and safety stuff to keep everybody happy. I've got it clamped nice and tight and sawing, which is the fun part. Just remember when you're doing curves with a jigsaw like this, don't force it, don't push the blade, keep that that, that uh, transfer blade, I call it there, so it, tra it travels across smoothly, the blade's vertical, and you can go around in a nice curve. Okay, I've got my two base plates here at the bottom, the supports, I've got one at the top, I've measured between the two. What you do is I like to screw, really, the bottom one in first, and then just check your measurements so you get everything square. So you can do it millimetres, might be a bit better than inches, a bit easier to see. And what I'm going to do is, now I've got that level at the bottom, I'm just going to mark the bottom, turn it over, just going to put a dab of glue. Now, you could nail this, people, you know, I do know that people do nail them, but I've always felt, with something that's movable, probably it's all right the picket fence because it's standing in one position, but the gate is always going to get moved. So I'm going to put a little dab of glue in the centre there, this regular wood adhesive to help bind it together. And should the movement of the gate being open and closed actually loosen it a bit, you know, the, the nails then, the screws and the wood will hold it all together. So, we're going to put two in each side sink it well in do the other side next I'm going to put one on each corner of the wood if you like about an inch or so in on the inch or so in away from either corner there and obviously triangles are strong so don't put them next to each other just put them across on the diagonal of the screws this one is going nowhere with glue and four screws. Get in there. Right, so now what I do there, you can see the bottom is nice and square, but this could be like that or like this, and it's going to look really bad once you start putting the other slats on. I don't want it up here, it doesn't look right. I want it about, we well can do it, really, five and a half inches. What should we call that? You've got to allow for the mate. So I'd say five inches will probably be about right. 
So four, five inches, and then I come up from the bottom, which is a fixed fixed point there, at 25 inches there, and then I make sure I'm 25 inches this side, bang on, and to check it square, you can measure across the diagonals here, another way of doing it. So a little dab of glue, just mark up here again. This one is a really easy way to make a gate. Why buy one when you can make one yourself from pallet wood for free? Now I don't see the reason to screw all the slats in. I mean it's the basic framework here of the gate that needs to be nice and strong. So we turn that over again, up against a pencil mark. Just be aware when you do use glue, there's a bit of slide movement in there until it actually beds in. And then we'll find the see how it moved then when I'm kneeling on it? That's why I put those pencil marks there. So I know exactly where to put them. That was satisfying because I used a bent screw then. I feel I feel as I've gained something. Rather than throw the screw away, I've got almost a free screw, if you'll pardon my friend. Not to get free one of those. Couple more screws and the framework's done. At the tip if you're working on the garage floor, you might pay to put a saucer, put all your screws in because sooner or later you want to put the car in there. And having had plenty of punctures and found my own screws in them and nails, it's best not to put them on the floor in the garage. I'm doing it just for the sake of this. There we go. Now how easy was that? You can see I've got the rounded tops, I've got my two supports top and bottom. It's nice and square. I'm now going to put a spar across there to give it some form of rigid point that I can actually put the other spans to and it stops it twisting off corner. Okay, I'm now going to put my crossbar in. Now, it would be easy just to put it across the outside, but I want it at the same depth, the same thickness here. I can't cut it on the inside, so I'm going to have to cut one angle off and an angle off at the bottom. Now, the best way to do this, I find, is just to overlap the whole thing right to the outside edge like this and that way you know you're going to get the maximum support from it and it's up to you to then mark across there where that flat edge is going to be because that is the angle you want I mark on there I come up the edge here over the edge of the wood there and then get my set, set square in a minute and I'm going to draw across there, which will make sure everything is square. I don't want those other bits sticking outside. I join those two up, and that will give me the angle cut. And as this is the inside, I'm just going to put INS inside. Otherwise, I might get the angles mixed up. Right, I've got my angle cut there. You can see it's at a slant. I'm going to put a little dab of glue there. Don't take much, it's just one of those little small things that I think with any moving objects or potentially moving objects might as well have a dab of glue and why not indeed. It goes on the angle perfectly. Make sure that you keep it inside the edge of the gate. Fire a couple of screws in and then let it all set up. Keep it nice and tight. One's in, buried, buried and gone to heaven. In you go. I've over torqued this corner so that it drives the screw and buries it right in there. Pallet wood is uh, potentially a soft wood so you can, you don't have to countersink everything. You will find that they do bury pretty well. There, as you can see, is the cross support angle. All I do is turn it over, and I'm ready to start making the slats.
there we go. That is the actual picket fence panels. They're going to go like this, all cut. I've got four there. Measure them up. I've got four. You just sand them down, and then make sure that you fit them equal distance between the two uprights. And I'm going to nail these in because the main structure is screwed and glued and nails then bent over I feel is fine for doing the rest of the panels. Let's get it together. Okay, all that remains now is to put the brackets on. I'm simulating this for you, I'm not doing it outside. Here's the post, your support post. That's a bracket, make sure you get a bracket with a nice big long span like that. Put your screws in. Make sure the hinge butts here, nice and neat and flat and flush with the gate post. And that basically is it pretty well done. I'm just going to show you how it works. And then I'm going to, well, I'll probably do it with the green this time. It's uh, in keeping with nature. And it's also the only can I've got left that's left over and therefore free. Oh, there you go. There is the gate post with the hinge on, the simulated post. And if I lean it down on the floor, you should be able to see if I push back as though that was a post in the ground, that it does indeed, it swings nice and free on that bracket. There is a nice picket gate. Well, it's not taking me more than a couple of hours to do, not even that, but it's with filming as well. I'm just gonna paint it green and it's ready to go.